Oh, hello everyone, and I'm glad to be back. I had a lot of fun with my family in Disneyland, but it's good to, to be back here in class. So what happened last week? What, what have you been able to do with the lesson? So the lesson was on plate tectonics. I left a bunch of you know materials there in the lesson. Were you able to study that okay on your own? Do you need us to review parts of that lesson or was that okay? We did talk about plate tectonics a little bit in the geography class. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mac, you said that you didn't see it there. So let me see. Um, so what I'm talking about is, let's see if we can go here. So if you go to modules, lesson module um, 20, plates, the earth outer shell, Okay, I had here, you know, the, the concepts, okay, and then a link to a video and a talk, you know, and then links to several websites to read about the different types of plate tectonics and then uh, the questions kind of to relate, to think about and so on and the assignment one of the assignments was to do a family home evening on the principles taught by Elder Hales. And the other one was to do some research on the geological features of the area where you live. Okay. And one of the students, Abigail, did actually a really good job with this. I would like, if you don't mind, Abigail, I would love to, to share that. Okay. Um, Mac, didn't you couldn't see that, or was that a couldn't find it? Let me show you here an example. If you don't mind, Abigail, my sharing your your uh, submission here. This is a kind of a brief uh, description of the. Um, um, Oh, okay, you didn't look hard enough. Okay, yeah, you have to actually get into Canvas and look at the, the thing, and that is where you also do the assignments and turn in the assignments, okay? <laughs> so here is a very nice description of the family home evening lesson that Abigail had with her family. And then she did a great description of the geology of her area in Cortez, Colorado, all right? She described the Ute Mountains, okay, and the different parts of the Ute Mountains and everything. The description was actually so cool that I went to Google Earth when I was reading this and I, I was like, okay, I need to find this mountain. I never had seen it before. And it's right here, okay, right here in the Four Corners area in Colorado. So Cortez is right there, that's where Abigail lives, and this is the Ute Mountains or the Sleeping Ute, okay? So a very, very beautiful area of mountains, and uh, you can actually do kind of a, a tour of, of that, okay? Uh, so it's this is the highest peak, okay, right there, the youth peak, and let me see if I can tilt this, uh, da, 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 da. go ahead, let's tilt it, oh, no, not that way, let's see where, uh, okay, so to see some perspective of the, of the mountain, we're going to tilt our view, all right, and so here you have the the, the the whole mountain. Abigail, would you like to tell us something else about this? So let me see the, oh, the pictures that you included. I think I saw one of the pictures, this one of the Mesa Verde 
Okay. Did you include some other pictures, Abigail? You can unmute yourself if you have a, a microphone and and uh, talk, or you can type in the chat. All right. But she described both the the, the sleeping youth and the Mesa Verde area, which is further. Okay, I think that the Mesa Verde area is here, is in this area. So on the south of Coyote Mesa, Rocky Ridge, you know, and you see the, the orography of the place and the falls of the mountains. Okay, and Why how they go into the valley there of Cortez. Mm -hmm. So you say, yeah, I also sent a picture of the youth mountains. I didn't see that one, Abigail. I didn't see that one, so I don't know how it would be best to send those. Okay, so, but that is that is the the assignment basically for the for the lesson. Okay, this is a great example of what I want you to do to describe to study the geology of your area and to describe it to actually um, understand how your what are the geological features of of your area. All right, yeah, that's a cool place, really. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, so um, the other question that I have is how are things going with the project of Lesson 17, okay, the space project, okay, I only have two submissions that came in, one from Team Epsilon and the other one from Team Gamma. Okay, so Team Epsilon, actually, Abigail and Emma did a very good job here uh, deciding their mission is going to be a flyby mission to the asteroid named 443 Eros. Okay, and so they describe where the asteroid is, how big it is, all right, and then the, the um, idea of the mission was going to be to do a flyby to in order to be able to take pictures, measure the temperature of the asteroid, measure more of the gravitational pull and so on, the mass and, and, and the, 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 the spectrometry of that. So they explain why they decided to do it. Okay, they, they say we love its unique shape. It's kind of a, a, a cigar type of shape. Mm -hmm. All right. So Madeline says that you are going to send uh, yours today. Okay, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. So if you are the only one doing something on that, no problem. Go ahead. You know, sometimes it's a team of of our own. Okay. So, but uh, keep working on on that. They also describe uh, briefly. This is not part of this part of the assignment. They describe how they were going to launch it. All right, and so they basically decided we are going to do also a, a three-stage rocket. Okay, similar to what they used to launch satellites. Okay, Team Gamma. If you don't mind my sharing, would you? Uh, also did uh, the mission Endeavor, and their mission was basically going to be um, similar to Voyager, okay? Basically uh, going through the solar system and going out of the solar system. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can turn it again if you want, okay? So Sabrina, you said that you'll turn in after class. Mm -hmm. So Natasha um, says that you are new to the class. Could you send me through the, the canvas, send me a, an email, okay, and I'll assign you to a team. Probably I'll assign you to the team with Mac, okay, so you can work with him since uh, um, you're, having, you're having trouble. Here, Abigail is sending me also, let me finish with this and then we'll see this, uh, this um, picture of the youth mountain, okay? All right, 
So they are, they are um, Team Gamma's uh, mission is going to be kind of more like a Voyager going through the solar system. And they did a very good job of describing the type of power, okay, that they were going to, to use. They actually did some research on the structure and insulation material, okay, what camera they were going to use. They actually did some research on looking at the type of cameras and radio equipment and so on. Very, very good, um, good, good uh, project, okay. They actually went, I would say, probably a little bit more detailed than I would expect at this part. So, so most of you say that you are close to turning in the project, okay? So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and, and so I'm really going to, to look forward to, to read your projects, assignments, and everything. And then the next time we are going to do the second part of this project that is going to be just focus on deciding the trajectory of your of your probe okay how are you going to guide it and what is the trajectory that you are going to to do okay so that depends of course on your mission that is why the mission is is something that you have to decide on what to do first okay any questions about the project the the the, the lesson 17 project All right, so this is beautiful, beautiful uh, picture here of the sleeping youth. And this is a scene from Cortes. So this is how you would see the mountain basically here from Cortes. Okay, so let's see if we go over here to, to Cortes and turn things around. Okay, so that is basically the picture is basically seeing the mountain range here the sleeping youth from this point of view and then if we see it here from the ground view that is where it is and you see the head okay the arms okay the the body the legs and this is the toe you even describe there in the in your in your assignment about that about that you could see the toad pointing up. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so Rodney, you don't have to have a lot of uh, gents. You also live in Cortez, so you live there with Abigail. Oh, amazing! Who would know? <laughs> so uh, Rodney, you don't have to have a lot of information here for this project, okay? The idea is to decide on the mission. Define the mission, what do you want to do? What do you want to explore and decide what? Well, you know, what to explore and why? And brainstorm, so this is kind of very general, brainstorming on uh, what would be the things that you need to accomplish the mission, okay? We are going to look into, into the details in other parts of the project. So you don't need to worry about having a lot of uh, detail information at this point, okay? Does that help? Mm -hmm. So Spencer, you say that here the sleeping youth looks like uh, kind of like Mount Panagos. It's similar, you know, here this one, it seems that it's more isolated as far as being kind of a, a mountain on its own, really. So beautiful, beautiful mountains. Good job with the assignments, guys, okay? I, I, I wish I had more time to get to the grading of all the assignments, but so far the things that I've seen, I really like. Emma is our... A best assignment turner okay she has turned most of the assignments there so really really good assignments good input uh, I, I like what I see okay so I, I want to encourage you to to keep working hard on on this okay if you have any questions let's uh, talk about them okay 
So let me see if I can see, let's see, we, we look at assignment 17. We talk also about uh, lesson 20, which was last week's lesson, okay? I do want you to, to, to look at the geology features of the area where you live, similar to what Abigail did, but for your area. So today's lesson is in uh, on about mountains. So Sabrina, you say, uh, and siblings, Sabrina and siblings, <laughs> Ohio is mostly clay. They are really isn't much to report geologically. It just settles. That's okay. So if your if your area, if your local area is kind of you know boring, okay, not much going on, expand your area. Mm -hmm. um, so you can you can go further in your area to describe the geological features of the eastern United States. In fact, today we are going to talk about some of that. And it's really something far from boring, really. Very, very interesting, the Appalachian mountain ranges there. So, Natasha, you live also close to, to Sabrina. You know, that is awesome. Rodney is asking, where did I go last week? to the happiest place on earth, to Disneyland. So we have a fabulous family vacation, okay? And uh, we took the, the, the kids, my three-year-old last boy, okay? We had gone to Disneyland before with the older uh, children. This was the time to, to go to Disneyland with the younger children. Beautiful, beautiful time we had there. After going to Disneyland, we went to Laguna Beach. That is one of the, the beaches close there to in Southern California. We went to the ocean. Um, part of there, Laguna Beach, has some tide pools, all right? So basically, they are outcroppings of rock that go into the, the ocean. And um, the the tide pools they have there uh, you know so you have the cliff okay of the mountain and then a very very narrow and small beach area okay they are separated there by these cliffs okay and then the tide pools are rocky outcroppings that go into the ocean and because of the waves the, um, there's a lot of marine life uh, growing there and so we, we went to, to look there at the tide pools, and I was able to see a starfish, uh, some anemone, and fishes, and algae growing. And actually, in one of the tide pools, it wasn't very, very big. It was probably about, you know, three, four feet uh, long. And underneath the rock, there was an octopus, okay? It was, it was very, very cool. Once in a while, he would extend some of the, the tentacles, okay, to grab something. So it was, it was beautiful, really. So I love doing that. Elizabeth, you said that you also do that in La Jolla Beach in California. The, the Laguna Beach is just a little bit further north from, from La Jolla, okay? Yeah, and so we found a lot of interesting things there in the typos. Mussels, the um, uh, barnacles, different types of barnacles. And it's really interesting because these organisms, they look really like rock, but they are alive. <laughs> you know, it's, it's something so, so fun for me to, to, to see all of that. So that is where I went. Uh, you, Natasha, you say you have a starfish. Oh, wow. So is it kind of in the, um, in a, in a, a bowl, in a, in a fish bowl, similar to finding Nemo? <laughs> okay. This was kind of, this was the only one that was uh, alive there in the tide pool that they could find, that we could find. And they said that, that years ago, there were a lot more starfish in that tide pool, but there was some virus or bacteria that attacked the, the, the starfish, and most of them uh, died, okay? So, also, it's not alive anymore, 
Okay, so you have it in a small box. They are really interesting because when they are dead, they turn into a calcareous, you know, a shell, really very solid. Yeah, okay, but when they are alive, they are very pliable and, and, and movable. Amazing, really. Okay, so that answers the question of where I was last week. <laughs> All right, so let's go now to the lesson for today. So today we have lesson 21, and uh, it's about mountains. So in the, in the lesson, I have a link there to a couple of videos that talk about mountains and the different types of mountains. And also I have several links to uh, mountains here in Wikipedia. We are going to see some of those there. So um, mountains are basically coming three, three the varieties. Okay, so they are, we have here some pictures of, of mountains. Okay, let's see this. All right, Mount Everest, the highest mountain on the earth. 29,029 feet uh, high and it's still uh, growing okay so the Himalayas all right is one of those um, mountain ranges that are formed when tectonic plates collide and so these are still being pushed upward little by little okay mm -hmm. uh, so Annika, you said that you like to collect the, you know, shells and everything. We found also some beautiful shells. You couldn't take many of those there. It's interesting that in many, many times up in mountains, you can still find shells, all right, of snails or actually marine life. So that indicates that the mountains have actually been uplifted, okay, this is in the in Peru, okay, Cordillera Hayawash, okay, of Peru. Very tall mountains also in the Andes. Sharp, very new mountains, okay. And so how can you tell whether a mountain range is, a, um, is new or it's old? How can you tell if a mountain range is new or it's old? In, ge in geological terms, okay? Of course. Mm -hmm. So, a will de Drew in the French Alps. What a beautiful mountain peak. Very, very sharp. Mm -hmm. All right, Rodney says the edges, if they are sharp, mm -hmm. Okay, you have a fossil horseshoe crab like organism. Okay. Oh, the, by the amount of. You can tell. So here, Sabrina says you can tell the age usually by the amount of weathering. Yes, okay. So, it, like Rodney says, if the edges are sharp, then the mountain is new. An old mountain range is worn out while new ones are sharper, Christopher. Good comments. That's exactly right. So you can always tell about that, you know, the age of the mountain range, but how sharp or, um, or dull it is because, you know, the erosion over time. Matterhorn is a very, very famous mountain in the Swiss Alps and a, a, a very unique shape, really, of the, of the Matterhorn, okay? Peaks of Mount Kenya in Africa, Wheeler Peak in Nevada, and here you can see now the effects of the erosion. You see the layers, the geological layers of the mountain as it's being pushed up, and the effects of erosion on the other side of the mountain. Okay, so lots of different types of mountains. Okay, let me uh, exit that. Okay, and we go back here to the article. And in the article, it explains that there's basically three types of mountains. You have the volcanic mountains, volcanoes, fall mountains, or block 
mountains. All right. So Sabrina, the Appalachian mountains are so old and weathered they are almost back down to being hills. Okay, and the Rockies are practically babies and they are super tall and pointy. That is absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rodney asks, do this simple observation of the edge or edges work for all type of mountains? It really does, all right? So at gener in general terms, you, you can look at the, the type of rock and you can look um, at, at the, the shape of the mountain, the formation of the mountain, uh, and they are determining the, the age of the mountain range. Okay, so it is really a very simple way, a very simple technique, but it's very uh, accurate if you wish for that. Okay, so yeah, so, so mm -hmm. go ahead. I have a, a follow up question. Uh huh. Think about this. So in Utah County, you have like Spanish Fork Mountains, Orm Mountains, Mount Tipinogos, they are pretty sharp. Yep. And then the other side of Utah Lake, you got like West Mountain and other smaller mountains that are now hills. They're like really rolly. There's no sharp edges on them. And I was thinking about that. I mean, I was like, well, that's interesting. The one side of the valley is all, I guess you could say they're older, and the other ones were younger. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that is actually how, how it is. Still, the whole, the whole uh, structure of the Rocky Mountains, it's uh, quite young, okay, relatively speaking. Okay. And you can tell because still even I live right by um, Lake Mountain, you know, in Saratoga Springs. And I go up there running to the mountain all the time and everything. The rocks... Even though the mountain is more eroded, and you certainly can tell that it's a, an older mountain than Timpanogos, Skua Peak, you know, all the Cascade Mountains there on the east side of the valley, on the west side of the valley, still the rocks are very jagged, okay? They are, they are, the rocks themselves are still very sharp, okay? And let me give you an example of, of uh, older, older mountains. Let's see. So, so but you can still tell the difference that, that some are newer and others are, are older. Let me here go in Google Earth, okay, if I can. Let me minimize this. And we'll go out and I'll go to a place where I'm, you know, more familiar with, okay, having been there, growing up there and, and everything. Let's orient this back north. And we'll go to Argentina, okay? So in Argentina, so, you know, talking about Ohio, you know, Ohio, you said, Sabrina, that uh, Ohio was kind of boring about geological features. Well, I grew up in this area in Rosario, okay, the city of Rosario, right in the middle of the Pampas area. There's nothing as far as mountains go in this area, in all this area. So the, all this area here is very much flat. Here in Entre Rios, okay, across the river, across the Paraná River, there are some hills that we call kind of mountains for us. But this whole area is very, very flat, all right? There's literally no mountains at all. <laughs> we had to drive 400 miles when we got to Cordoba, okay, to this area. And in this area, you had mountains. And these were real mountains, but they were really old mountains. And you can see the mountain ranges here. There were two mountain ranges, one over here on this side, and then another valley and then an, a, a taller mountain range. The rocks here were all mostly round, okay? So I remember that we would go to the rivers here, you know, the little rivers, and you could barefoot 
you could climb through the rocks and jump from one rock to the other and everything without any problem because the rocks were all kind of rounded pebbles. That is how much erosion they had had during, you know, millions of years, okay? So even in eroded mountains here on the Rocky Mountains, you cannot do that because the rocks are still quite sharp. Like if you think of the Provo River, you know, very, very sharp rocks. If you go to the Andes Mountains, and I've gone, a, you know, a few times here to the Andes Mountains in Argentina, going between, you know, Argentina and, and Chile, these are new mountains and very, very jagged, very tall, okay, and the sharp, sharp edges in, in the rocks, okay. So you can still tell uh, the, the, the age by, by the erosion, okay. How are the, the rocks of the mountains there in the Appalachian area? Mm -hmm. Let's see what we have, some of the comments here. Mm -hmm. I think Ashlyn didn't want that to go public. Sorry? Ashlyn typed, do you have chickens and stuff? No, we don't have chickens. No, I, I lived in a, um, in a community that they don't allow <laughs> that. Sadly enough, I would love to grow some chickens, but <laughs> have a dog. <laughs> So my question, one my question is, is that could there be younger mountains next to older mountains, or is that? Mm -hmm. I mean, that happens. But I was like, how does that happen? Because if there's such a big earthquake, can the old mountain disappear? Uh huh. So could there be old mountains on top of new mountains? I or, think that. Or like in Utah Valley, you got one side, you got rounder mountains. Mm -hmm. like yes, good, good question. I think that the answer is also yes, that could be the case. And in the lesson, as I was studying, preparing for the lesson, that is the case here in the mountains uh, that are here, the Jura Mountains. You see this area, okay? These Jura Mountains are older than the Alps. So the Alps are very tall mountains, very new, jagged mountains. We saw, you know, the Matterhorn and uh, some of the other Alp uh, mountains, very, very jagged. The Jura Mountains, on the other hand, are older and they are fold mountains. They are not formed by the, the fault. They are, fall, they are formed by the folding of the earth. And so you see here in this area that the mountains are kind of like, um, you know, ridges and valleys in between, okay? And so you almost can see from the top the, the formation of the faults. These are older mountains and these are newer ones. So the newer ones, the Alps, that are basically formed by the collision of two tectonic plates, okay, one tectonic plate here in the south of Italy and the other tectonic plate here in Europe, that forms the Alp mountains and then they keep growing higher. And because of the pressure against the other tectonic plates, they fold the ground and the mountains here forming these Jura mountains, okay? So these are also still forming, but they are of a different type. They are not, if you wish, that jagged. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. All right, good, okay. So you say, Sabrina, that the rocks are pretty smooth there in Ohio area. So that indicates, again, that that is an area where erosion has occurred, and so um, you know you have you have uh, older older mountains. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 
Yeah, the area in Argentina where I live is kind of like Missouri, Kansas, you know, the, the Pampas is kind of like the, 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 the Great Plains here of the United States. Very, very um, eroded and sedimentary uh, land, really. Okay, let me see if we go here again to the article. So we have volcano mountains. We are going to talk more about volcanoes in next class. We have a whole class dedicated, I guess, there to, to, to volcanoes. So, and then here I have a link to the fall mountains, to the articles that explain how the falls occur. And the best way really to look at the fall mountains is to look at the examples of these mountains. So. In the article, they show three examples, the Jura Mountains that we just saw in Google Earth. All right, and here you have a picture of one of the faults. So you see how as the Earth falls, it kind of breaks and it makes, makes the Earth fall on, its, on itself, if you wish, okay? So sometimes these faults also occur in areas where there are faults like in in um, here in uh, in the Provo area in Utah there are uh, some of the mountains that you literally can see the, the the layers really twisted and being folded on on itself okay on themselves the Sargos Mountains is another example of a fold range where the mountains are folding. And this is in the western uh, area of Iran. So let's see if we go to Google Earth. Okay, so these are the Sargos Mountains. Okay, and what happens here is you also can see the lines of the folding, all right? So here is the whole area of the Sargos Mountains, a big range, really. Let me, let me go a little bit out so we can see it. Oh, no, oh, okay, there. So the Sargos Mountains, a big, big mountain range. And what happens here is you have two tectonic plates, the Iranian tectonic plate and the Arabian plate. The Arabian plate is slowly moving in this direction, northeast, okay? And it causes the faults of the softer Iranian plate. And that is why the, 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 the Sargos Mountains forms. How do they form, okay? so. You see, you see that um, the lines of the folding of these mountains. Usually these mountains, the fold mountains, are not necessarily very sharp, okay? But, uh, and, and they are, uh, sometimes they are older, sometimes they are new, all right? And they take a long time to form relatively. Let me see, the other example that I have here is the ridge and valleys in the Appalachian Mountains. So for you that live there in the, in the east of the United States, we have also fold mountains there. Okay, now let's go over there and see these, these uh, ridges, they are really cool. And you see, you can see them very clearly here, okay, the falls of these mountains, the Blue Ridge, you know, and the Appalachian Mountains, how that falls into this area, all right? So the Appalachian Mountains is a large, large area, but you see part of that is these falls that have uh, ridges and valleys in between. I remember one time flying over, going to the East Coast, and seeing these, uh, these uh, valleys and ridges. Really amazing to see from the air, because you can really see the lines, the parallel lines of the falls. Okay, 
So see how clearly you can see the valleys and the ridges. The clear areas are the taller ridges, more rocky, and the greener are the valleys, okay, where the vegetation grows and there's water running in, in parallel to the ridges. But you can see that, you know, how the, the earth falls and makes these this, uh, valleys and ridges. Okay. This was a very difficult obstacle to overcome, you know, when people were exploring, were moving west. Uh, and so that is why the um, expansion to the west happened pretty much around the, this, these mountains. Okay. So, all right. <clears throat> okay. Let me see some of the comments that you have. Uh, just <laughs> so make your own volcano. We are not going to make our own volcano. I think that you probably have already done that at homeschool. Okay, we are going to talk about some other cool things on volcanoes, <laughs> but I don't think that we can do this online. All okay, right, and you probably have already done that, <laughs> right? So, but we'll we'll look at some other things. <laughs> yeah. So yes, Mike, Mac, you have a flight simulator. Why don't you fly over this area? All right. Try to see these uh, falls and everything, and then report back to to us on on how you, how you, how it felt flying over over this area. Okay. Very very cool. Not now. Just just do it and tell me. Tell me later. Okay, you can you can report on that or report next week to the to the class. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Natasha says you should fly to Indiana. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. It's it's a flight simulator that are very very accurate in really describe you know the, the going over the ground and everything. So go ahead and and do that. That would be an awesome. Okay, so we have, those are the fault mountains. The fault mountains are really when there is a fault on the ground. So there is a two tectonic plates colliding together. So this is the other type of uh, mountain ranges. And most of the rocky mountains are of this type, are of fault mountains, all right? So when the, the faults, um, do you think I could look up volcanoes in Italy for that project? I kind of want to know a bit more about Sicily. Yes, please, Emma. You you know, Italy has very, very uh, interesting orography. So you have the Alps, and then you have all the volcanoes in the south of Italy, in Sicily, active volcanoes, Etna, Vesuvius, some of the most active volcanic activities is there in Italy. And then, of course, the Pyrenees uh, mountains right in the middle of Italy. So the, the assignment for this lesson is, okay, let me see pa, 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 if I go to lesson 21. So the assignment for this lesson is to hand draw a map of either the area where you live or if you want, you can certainly do it of the country in Europe that you are studying, of the, the mountains, okay? Indicating the type of mountains that you have in that area and a, the kind of the, the, the geology of the mountains, all right? So whether they are new or old and what, you know, are they fault mountains, volcanic mountains, or or folding mountains? So yes, yeah, certainly you can do that, Emma. Great idea, great idea. So the fault mountains is when the the two tectonic plates, okay. And you know, when we talk about tectonic plates in general, we talk about the big plates, the big tectonic plates. But usually the tectonic plates are also splintered into smaller plates, all right? So 
not all the tectonic plates are huge. Some are, are literally very small and they have lots of faults in between. And within these areas of faults, that is where you see these fault mountains being created. Okay, so the fault either raises up by pressure or lowers down, okay, depending on who, which, which area creates more pressure. I have here this picture of the Teton Mountains that is really very interesting and very descriptive. Mm -hmm. So Christopher says, I basically live on a fault. Yes, all right, where do you live? My, my brother lives on, in east of Provo, right by the mountains, and he is really on a, on a pretty steep area. So you live in Santa Queen, Utah. Yes, that is also an area of, of faults, okay, right against the mountains. Are you in the east side against the mountains, or are you on the valley side of Santa Queen, Christopher? Okay. So, my brother lives right on the east side against the mountains. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, luckily, you are on the valley. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> okay, Nanika, you, you are fine now? Okay, good. Excellent. So, he lives right against the mountains, and his home is, is like here. Two homes above him, there was a, a lot that was for sale and someone wanted to bought the, the lot and they started building a home. When they went to dig the foundation of the home, they found that that lot was on a fault, literally. So they couldn't build anything. They kept pouring cement and the cement would just keep going down, down the fault, all right? Yeah. And so there was nothing that he could do with, with that lot, all right? There's, he literally, it was right on the fault. And you couldn't see it, um, you know, to the naked eye. But when they started uh, doing excavation uh, in order to put the foundation of the home, they encountered that there was really nothing underneath, okay, that there was a a fault in between the two areas of that lot and they couldn't build anything. So yeah, very, very sad, poor, poor guy. So have any of you uh, gone to the Teton Mountains and seen the Tetons? So the Tetons are in the border between uh, Idaho and um, Wyoming. Beautiful, beautiful mountains. Let's do a fly over there. Okay, really fast. All right, let's see. Here we go. Do the Titans. Okay. These are these are the Titan Mountains. Grand Titan and Moran. Okay. So Idaho Falls, Rexburg, Idaho, where BYU Idaho is. Okay, and you see here the line between the two states. So the Titans are really on the on the Wyoming uh, side, okay, close to Jackson. But see what happens here. You see that the west side of the mountains is kind of a more, um, you know, steady slope. The east side of the Tetons is just straight down, all right? And it's exactly like this picture shows. And at the base of the Tetons, this is where the fault is, the Teton fault zone, okay? So you see that the material here, the, the, the two blocks, if you wish, one was pushed up, and as it was pushed up, all this um, sedimentary soft material that was on top was also pushed up but that is quickly eroded, okay? With rain and wind and everything, all that is eroded down, and that is what, you know, kind of clears that until it exposes the bedrock. 
and then the erosion starts forming the jagged peaks there of the Tetons. Okay, so but you literally can see that that effect very very clearly here in the in the Tetons. Mm -hmm. All right. Have you ever had the, um, the, the chance to go there? Mm -hmm. Okay. How long does it take to shoot up? That is a good question. You know, most uh, geologists applying the principle of uniformity, basically they think that these movements happen very slowly in geological times, okay? And many of these uh, faults are still active. And so they, they still are uh, moving up, okay? Now they have with uh, GPS systems and everything, they actually can measure how fast uh, the mountains move and how fast they, they, they keep growing or folding and so on. When I was reading here the article on the Sargos Mountains, they were mentioning precisely that, okay, that they are still uh, being, being formed, okay, and you see that they go through different ages and so on, but with GPS, they can measure that they move between 10 millimeters per year to 5 millimeters per year, all right? So... Sometimes they, um, they, they are very, very slow processes. The question is, how do they ever happen quickly? I actually think that they do. Sometimes they do happen quickly, um, relatively quickly. But when you have earthquakes, those are very large changes. Okay, and they can cause uh, big movements of the of the mountains and big formations of the mountains and the rocks. Okay, so the 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 type of mountains that are formed quick quicker, okay, the fastest and sometimes very fast are the volcanoes. So volcanic uh, mountain formation can actually happen really fast. And sometimes the changes are uh, catastrophic and really sudden, you know, like the explosion of Mount St. Helen and, 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 and so on and other, and other cases, okay? So, um, yeah, so most of the times these movements are uh, slow in, in geological times. Other times I believe that they are faster, that they can happen happen quite fast, really. Okay, so now I have a, another um, principle that I want to, to, to touch on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Christopher has a good point here that according to with the Book of Mormon, it happened quite quickly. So we have the, the, the account in 3 Nephi, when uh, at the time of the, the, the death of, of Jesus Christ, there were lots of earthquakes and big changes in, uh, in the land, okay? And that happened in a period literally of a few days, all right, where you have, you know, huge earthquakes and movements of land and, and new mountains being formed and folded and other places being destroyed and uh, eroded quite fast. So there is evidence that sometimes things happen very fast. Whenever I go to um, Zion's National Park in southern Utah, you see this, you know, big, you know, cliffs of the, the, the sandstone and, and you think, yes, you know, that, that takes a long, long time for the erosion to cause those. But then in some areas, you see huge boulders, you know, of sandstone that have fallen to the valley, okay? And you can almost tell where that block, you know, that huge piece of mountain came from. All right, like in Angel's Landing, exactly. Okay, so 
the question that I have for you is, when that piece of rock fell, did it fell quickly or did it fell slowly? Obviously, it had to fell rather quickly, all right? So the process for cutting the, the sand, you know, and eroding the rock until it fell, that process was probably very slow and happened over, you know, millions of years or thousands of years. But when the rock itself was weak enough to fall, the fall happened in a matter of seconds. And that is a huge change to the mountain in just a matter of seconds, <laughs> you know. So those things could happen also also quickly. Mm -hmm. That's right. That is uh, how, how I, I think of, of things, you know. So, yes, and so, so sometimes these, these changes could be... Um, okay. Yeah, no problem if you need to, to leave... That's fine, Sabrina. Thank you very much. You can watch the rest of the lesson on, online. We'll be finishing pretty soon. Now, in the scriptures also, there are something interesting is that the Lord appeared many times in mountains. Okay, so here we have three examples, Exodus 19.20, and the Lord came down upon, upon Mount Sinai, on the top of the mount, and the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. Here is where Moses received the Ten Commandments. The Lord wanted actually not just Moses to go to the mountain, but he wanted to prepare the whole people of Israel to go, but they didn't prepare themselves, so they were not worthy of going up to the top of the mountain and seeing the Lord. In 1 Nephi, we have also the, the case that when Nephi was pondering about the Lehi's dream, and he wanted to know more about that, it says that I was caught away in the Spirit of the Lord, yea, into an exceedingly high mountain, which I never had before seen and upon which I never had before set my foot. And then on this mountain is where Nephi has the vision of Christ and, the, you know, basically everything that the, the Lord revealed to him up on the mountain. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does anybody know where that mountain is today? We really don't. Okay, the mountain of Nephi? of Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. Ashling asked uh, Ashling ask a very, very important question, I, and it is really the point. Aren't mountains kind of like temples? And the answer is yes, okay? They can be, they can be. In the scriptures, you have here three cases. Here we have the case of the brother of Jared, when he also sought the Lord for inspiration and to touch the stones that he had prepared, okay, and he did that going upon the top of the mount, okay, so he went to the top of a mountain in order to talk to the Lord, so the mountains are temples. Benjamin is asking, why mountains? Why do you think that the Lord uses mountains as the places where he appears to his prophets. Okay. We now, we now, you know, don't do that, but we do it in temples. Okay. But why mountains? I think that the reason... Oh, okay. I don't know what is the, the problem there. But uh, I think that the reason is because mountains are kind of naturally um, inaccessible. Okay, the Mount Sinai is where the Ten Commandments were made and given. So this is a picture of the traditional area where Mount Sinai is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Ashley. Mm -hmm. 
So I really think that the reason why the Lord appears to his prophets anciently, especially in mountains, is because they are, they are kind of inaccessible. They are private places. That is always how I feel when I go up to mountains. It's kind of similar to like going to the, to the temple. Okay. And uh, you feel closer to the Lord also being high in, in altitude. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so I really think that uh, mountains are quiet and peaceful compared to the rest of the world, just like temples are. Very, very good insight, Christopher, on that. That's right. Okay. So that is exactly why, why I think that the Lord uses mountains and temples in order to reveal himself. I have had many, many very good uh, spiritual experiences actually hiking uh, mountains and uh, I feel you know pretty close to to the Lord also similar to like going to to a temple mm -hmm. okay yeah they smell so good yeah they smell clean and pure that's right yeah the air smells uh, beautiful mm -hmm. you Elizabeth she said that you live on a mountain beautiful you know so that is that is uh, that is really the the, the, the principle so uh, one of the assignments that I have for this class also is uh, for you to write an essay comparing you know your experiences climbing a mountain and going to the temple what are the things that are similar and what are the things that are different for for that mm -hmm. so Okay, well, let's uh, finish with a word of prayer, and then uh, we'll we'll call it a, a class. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nicola says the mountains make such a nice scenery. It's it's really also so beautiful, like temples. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you Annika, you climb Mount Washington in New Hampshire for a girls' camp. All right, that is beautiful area. Very, very green and, and clean. Mm -hmm. Who would like to offer a prayer for us? Who has a mic available? Alec, do you have a mic on? Let's see. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Abigail, do you have a mic available? Are you still around? Mm -hmm. If you could... Offer prayer, if not someone else. I am. Okay, Nathan, go ahead. <clears throat> Dear my Father, we thank you for this wonderful day we had to come as a class. And please bless if we have the Spirit to be with us. Please bless that we can do the assignments, okay? Please bless that those aren't with us this week, that they'll be with us tomorrow. Or Rush to classes. May the Lord can come from me in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you very, very much. All 